setting up and performing a manual red cell exchange in sickle cell disease for patients who weigh over 40 kilograms. What will be covered in this animation? The purpose of this animation is to give a broad outline of the process involved in a manual red cell exchange transfusion in sickle cell disease. It is not prescriptive and your own network should have provided your hospital with specific training, guidance and documentation. We'll discuss this in three sections. Firstly, the principles. Secondly, setting up. And thirdly, performing a manual red cell exchange transfusion. Principles and considerations in manual red cell exchange transfusions for sickle cell disease. Manual red cell exchange transfusions are when the patient's blood is taken out from one vein while saline and donor blood are given concurrently into another vein. There are situations where this is done slightly differently. Arterial lines are sometimes used as the out access, most commonly in pediatrics. Sometimes the process is done sequentially when you're limited to one access point. This is not ideal as this will result in fluid shifts. However, it may be the only feasible option on occasion. This animation will not discuss these scenarios further. Please refer to local guidance. The aim is to decrease the overall sickle cell percentage, also called HBS percent, and to meet the target hemoglobin, also called HB, by performing an isovolemic procedure. What information do we need to decide what we should prescribe? We need to know what the current hemoglobin and sickle cell percentage is and what hemoglobin and sickle cell percentage we are aiming for. We call the latter the targets. We also want to know what the patient's weight is. Choosing the target hemoglobin and why we use saline as well as blood. You don't want large changes of hemoglobin and thus viscosity due to the procedure. This is achieved by using saline as well as blood being infused as the hematocrit concentration of red cells of a unit of red blood cells is usually much higher than the patient's own blood being removed. Generally speaking, it is unwise to increase the haemoglobin by more than 40 grams per litre in one day, or to increase the haemoglobin beyond 110 grams per litre. If the haemoglobin is too high, the increased viscosity may make the patient unwell. Choosing the target sickle cell percentage. You will want to decrease the sickle cell percentage as much as possible, often aiming for a target sickle cell percentage of less than 30%. In a manual exchange, it is difficult to accurately predict what the sickle cell percentage will be at the end of the procedure. The exchange process may need to be repeated in someone who has not recently been transfused, as it's unlikely to get the sickle cell percentage from 100% to less than 30% in one procedure. You will want to decrease the sickle cell percentage as much as possible, often aiming for a target sickle cell percentage of less than 30. Reducing the sickle cell percentage very low, for example, less than 15%, becomes very inefficient, as you are taking out significant amounts of just infused donor blood. Therefore, we often aim for a target sickle cell percentage of 15% or 20% in someone who is in a long-term program so that when they return to their next exchange, their sickle cell percentage is not greater than 30% or whatever their target is. For those who are having a one-off exchange, often a sickle cell percentage of 30% is sufficient, though this needs to be a clinical decision. Transfusion prescription, key components. Using the targets, weight and current blood results, you will be able to decide how much blood and saline should go in and how much blood should come out. With small people weighing less than 40 kilograms, you need to be very careful about the rate at which this happens. We document the proportion, volumes and rates of the saline and blood going in 
and blood coming out on the exchange prescription. Phases Pre-exchange phase, phase 1, phase 2, phase 3, phase 4, post-exchange phase. There are several ways of achieving your targets. We will discuss a way of doing this using the term phases, where each phase describes what needs to be done. Using this method, sometimes there is a pre-exchange phase, then the four phases, and finally a post-exchange phase. Pre-exchange phase. Check for significant anemia or dehydration pre-procedure. If your patient is dehydrated, consider prescribing an infusion of 10 milliliters per kilogram normal saline, usually to a maximum of 500 milliliters in an adult. Use your clinical judgment. If they are significantly anemic, for example, hemoglobin less than 70 grams per liter, consider prescribing a small transfusion. Remember, three milliliters per kilogram of packed red blood cells with a hematocrit of 0.58 will increase the hemoglobin about 10 grams per liter. Phases one to four. Example of exchange phases for an adult. Phase one, 350 to 500 milliliters saline in. Same volume of blood out. Phase two, one unit of blood in, same volume of blood out. Phase three, one unit of blood in, same volume of blood out. Phase four, one unit of blood in, same volume of blood out. Ensure the patient and or parent understands the procedure and has consented according to national guidance. Documentation and clarity are key you need to know the plan for the procedure. Precisely record input and output and document clearly what took place. The exact volumes and ratios of blood and saline infused will depend on the starting haemoglobin and desired haemoglobin and the clinical state of the patient. Whilst we often start with saline in, this isn't always suitable. For example, if the haemoglobin is low at the start. Conversely, if the haemoglobin is already high, for example, greater than 100 grams per liter at the start of the procedure, you may want to give saline in phase three instead of blood. Consult your local guidelines for more information. Post-exchange phase. In the post-exchange phase, we assess the patient and check the results to see whether we have reached the targets we are aiming for and whether a further procedure needs to take place. How do we decide the volumes of blood and saline for each of the phases? The relative proportions of blood to saline going in at the same time as the patient's blood is being withdrawn out will determine how much the haemoglobin increases. If the starting haemoglobin is high, then you would increase the proportion of saline versus blood going in to prevent it exceeding a target haemoglobin of 110 grams per liter. Essential components of a manual red cell exchange. Location, staffing and consent. Preparing for the exchange. Prescription and exchange record. Venous access. Location, staffing and consent. Where the exchange takes place is dependent on the patient's clinical condition and staff availability, not the procedure itself. It may be on a day unit, a ward, or if the patient is very unwell, intensive care may be required. One trained member of staff may be sufficient, but a second member of staff may be needed if the patient is a young child or their condition requires it. A blood transfusion requires consent as per national guidance. Prescription and exchange record. Ensure the patient and or parent understands the procedure and has consented according to national guidance. Documentation and clarity are key. You need to know the plan for the procedure. Precisely record input and output and document clearly what took place. Here are some examples. Preparing for the exchange. Check that the blood has been issued and is available for transfusion. Venous access. 
The patient will need two cannulae, normally one in each arm. The first for infusion of saline and blood in, and the other for withdrawing blood out. Good flow rates in and out are required to ensure isovolemia is maintained. Usually, the better vein is picked as the out access. Sometimes a central venous catheter is required because the arm veins are not suitable. Perform cannulation for each venous access as per local protocol. Attach a three-way tap on each side. Assemble the in access. Hang the first infusion bag, be it blood or saline. Run it through a blood giving set and attach the three-way tap. Ideally, blood should be run through a blood warmer. For those weighing less than 40 kilograms, an intravenous pump is often used to control and measure the rate of transfusion. Note, you can give blood after saline through the same giving set, but not the other way round. Venous access. On the out access, put a blood pressure cuff on, uninflated, Give a ball for the patient to squeeze. You may be using these later to encourage the blood flow. Assembling the out access. Attach the venisection bag, place on scales and press the tear to zero. Starting the technique. Other helpful tips to keep the blood flowing and the patient relaxed are keeping the patient warm and also offering them distraction techniques, especially if they're anxious younger or have additional learning needs, for example, watching a film or enlisting the help of a play therapist. You are now ready to start. There are two similar techniques. One is for those greater than 40 kilograms with good venous access. The second is for those less than or equal to 40 kilograms or who have poor venous access. We will talk about the former here. greater than 40 kilograms and good venous access. We will use a common example of a three in, four out exchange in an adult who has already had the pre-exchange phase or who didn't need it. Phase one, the saline bag is hung on the drip stand. Using the roller clamp on the giving set, run the saline to the end of the giving set and then close the roller clamp, then attach it to the in cannula. Start the saline on the in side by turning on the pump and or by using the roller clamp. Then open the three-way tap to the first vinisection bag on the out cannula side. Check that flow rates are similar on both sides. When the saline has been infused and the same volume of blood has been withdrawn, phase one is complete. Is it flowing nicely? If not, first get the patient to squeeze the ball and or inflate the blood pressure cuff gently. Attach a Lua syringe to the three-way tap and aspirate gently from the patient's outline to fill the syringe. Then turn the three-way tap to the vinisection bag and expel the contents to the vinisection bag. Repeat as necessary. Is the scale indicating the same weight as the volume blood going in? When we use a scale, we assume one milliliter of blood weighs one gram. Using a pump does make this easier, as you can see exactly what has been infused. If it isn't the same, then adjust the in to go at a slower or faster rate. Remember, isovolemia is key. Monitor. Ask the patient how they're feeling and look for any signs of an adverse reaction. Do a set of observations at 15 minutes after starting the first unit or sooner if there are any concerns. Your first phase is finished. How much saline was infused and how much blood collected? Note this on your prescription record. Prepare for phase two. Phase two, after checking the blood, attach it to the giving set and hang it on the drip stand. The volume of the unit is written on the bag label. 
and in the UK is often in the region of 260 millilitres. Document this as the volume in. Start the blood. When that is flowing in, then open the three-way tap to the second venesection bag on the out cannula side. Check the flow rates are similar and when the same volume has been infused, for example, 260 millilitres in and venesected, for example, 260 millilitres out, stop. You will need to check and monitor as you did in phase one. Phase three and four. Repeat phase two. Once for phase three and once for phase four. The next step is the post-exchange phase. Post-exchange phase. The exchange is now finished. Now you want to check you've reached the targets you aimed for. Take blood tests. Full blood count and sickle cell percentage as a minimum. If the person is unwell or there were abnormal blood tests prior to the exchange, or if you are going to have to repeat the procedure, then consider other blood tests, including renal and liver function, as well as calcium. If possible, wait 30 minutes or so before taking the bloods to allow the donor blood to equilibrate in the circulation to get a more accurate result. Run the full blood count on a point of care testing machine if you need the result back soon, for example, if the patient is unwell. If the haemoglobin is more than 110 grams per litre, or the haemoglobin increased by more than 40 grams per litre, then consider venesecting 3 millilitres per kilogram with an isovolemic infusion of saline to allow for a reduction in haemoglobin of 10 grams per litre. You may want to do this more than once, depending on how much you have overshot. Recheck the haemoglobin and sickle cell percentage as these will have changed. If the haemoglobin is less than 110 grams per litre or the haemoglobin not increased by more than 40 grams per litre, then stop if part of the routine programme. Or start at phase one again if you think you will need to decrease the sickle cell percentage further, e.g. if starting sickle cell percentage was high. You may want to change the proportions of saline and blood in on a second exchange as the starting haemoglobin may be different. If this is being done as a day case, we usually ask the patient to rest for an hour and then make sure they can walk around the ward or unit and feel fine. Let them know the signs to watch out for regarding a transfusion reaction. Give them their next appointment for exchange, if relevant. NHS blood and transplant.